Hey everyone, in today's tutorial, we'll be looking at how to create this custom timer in DaVinci Resolve using shapes, expressions, and all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and uh, dive right in. All right, so we're staying on the Fusion page, and the first thing we're going to do is to go grab the shape nodes. So we're going to bring the S rectangle and S duplicate nodes. You can simply drag them into the panel or just click on each one. Now the system is going to automatically set it up for you. So now let's go to the S rectangle node first, and we're going to start by bringing down the width setting there, and then we're also going to bring down the height setting. Now let's push this line towards the top of the screen by bringing up the white offset setting. So now this is going to become one of the 12 lines you saw that will be going around the clock. Now let's go to the S duplicate node and we're going to change the copy setting to 11. So that will give us 12 of these long lines in total, including the original one. And then we're going to change the access mode from this to absolute. And then as you can see that when we adjust the Z rotation here, this will allow all the lines to fan out like a deck of cards. But the question is, what's the number to use so that they're evenly spaced out? So the answer to that is simply 360 divided by 12. And then as you can see, this gives us 30. All right, so now it's time to create the short lines. And to do that, we're going to once again use S rectangle and S duplicate nodes. And we're going to connect the old ones to this one. And you're going to see that a new S merge is going to emerge. So now let's go to the new S rectangle node here. Let's start by bringing down the width setting until it's a little bit narrower than the longer lines. And then we're going to start to also bring down the height setting. We're going to make sure that this one is also much shorter compared to the longer lines. And now let's just push this white offset setting up a bit so that this short lines is going to sort of sit in the middle of the longer lines. So now if we zoom in a bit, you can see that it's nicely snuggled inside the long lines. So now let's come to the new S duplicate node and change the copy setting to 59. And then this will make the total number of these short lines 60. And now let's change the axis mode from origin relative to absolute. And then once again, the Z rotation here will allow all these lines to fan out. And number to use here is six. And once again, that's the result of 360 divided by 60. All right, guys. And now, as you can see, we have both the short and long lines built out. And the next thing we're going to do is to create the ring and circle within the lines. And to do that, we're going to use the S ellipse node here, and we're going to connect this to the S merge node. And the first thing we're going to do here is to right click the width setting and then in the menu, select expression. And then we're going to just drop this plus sign here on top of the height setting. This will make width setting equal to the height setting. And anytime we adjust the height, the width setting is also going to adjust accordingly. So I think this is a good size for the ring. And then we're going to uncheck the solid option up here. And now let's just start to bring up the border width ever so slightly to create that outer ring. Uh, and I think this is pretty good. So now let's just make a copy of this S ellipse node. And in this new one, let's make sure we connect it back to the S merge. And then we're going to just check the solid option here. And then let's go to the style tab and then change the color to like a dark gray. And then we're going to simply just lower the opacity setting. And then this will give us that translucent circle that we saw in the introductory video. I think uh, this is good enough. So now let's bring the S text node, which we'll be using to create the actual timer. So let's connect it to the S merge node. And now let's focus on the text box here for a second. We're just going to simply right click it and then in the menu, select expression. Now an expression bar is going to pop up. We're going to just get rid of whatever is there. And instead, what we're going to write is time. So simply just write that and then hit enter. This, as you can see, is going to give us the frame that the playhead is currently sitting on. So as expected, right now, it should give us 24. Okay, so that's perfect. Now we're gonna return to the formula, simply divide time by 24. And 24 is actually the frame rate of my current timeline. So 24 frames per second. And now, as you can see, this is basically converting this frame into second. So now, as you can see, at 24th frame, it's going to give me one, and then at 48th frame, it's going to give me two, and so on and so forth. But the problem, as you can see, is that in between, it's going to give me all these numbers with decimals. So that's not good. And to prevent that, we're going to simply enclose this existing formula within another formula called math.floor. 
So once you do that, simply just to hit enter. And now, as you can see, this decimal problem is no longer there. It's a smooth count up from zero to four throughout this entire uh, clip. And the best part is that this is going to change as you adjust the duration of this clip. All right, now let's just simply just bring up the size here. And guys, I will say we are 90% there pretty much. All right, now let's uh, create the red band that goes around this clock. And to do that, we're going to bring in an S ellipse node. And also we're going to bring a S render node to render this out separately from all the other nodes. And the reason of which I will get into later. So what this also means is that for all these other nodes, we need a S render uh, node as well. So now let's just connect this one to the other one as a foreground. Now let's go to this S ellipse node. Let's go to the styles uh, tab there first and change the color from white to red. Now let's go back to controls tab. The first thing we're going to do is just to make sure that width setting is equal to height. And now let's just uncheck the solid option up top. And then let's start to bring up the border width ever so slightly. Now let's start to just uh, bring down the height here. I want this band to touch the outer ring. And also at the same time, it should cover all the short lines as well. So this is just a look that I'm going for. And what this means, as you can see, that I'm constantly going back and forth between these two settings until it's reached the desired look. And honestly, guys, this just really it comes down to you, your preference. Uh, it all depends on how you want to design it. And to animate the red band, we are going to use the length setting here. Now, there are a couple issues. First of all, it's the cap style. So let's change it from round to flat. And this is going to look way much better. Also, the starting position is not at the top. So to fix that, we're going to come to the position setting and then change it to 0.25 instead. So now you will see that the starting position is at the top of the circle. Now we just need the length setting to go from zero to one from the beginning of this clip to the end of this clip. And to do that, we are going to use expression once again. So let's uh, right click the length setting and then in the menu, select expression. And now in this expression bar, we're going to type in time. But this time we are not going to divide time by, uh, you know, frame rate. We're going to divide it by the duration of this clip, which is 119. Now you can type that in, but that is going to be static. So instead, we are going to type in comp dot render and this will essentially give us the duration of the current clip. So now, as you can see, the length setting is going to go from zero uh, to one throughout this entire clip. And that is perfect. Now, one problem for some people is the fact that this red band is going counterclockwise instead of clockwise. So in order to fix that, ideally, we should just be able to plug in it as transform node after as ellipse. However, there are no settings here that will allow us to do that. So instead, what we need to do is to plug in a regular transform node after the S render node here and uh, uh, click on the flip horizontal setting. This will change it from counterclockwise to clockwise. And this is the main reason why I'm rendering this S ellipse node separately from all the other nodes. All right, so now as you can see, if we do that, and now this red band is gonna go clockwise. So guys, uh, this is uh, mostly it. One last small thing here is just let's make sure merge is connected to media all one. And now let's just uh, take this back to the edit page and we can just uh, let this animation render. All right, now if we have a look at this animation, you can see that we have a nice little timer created. And the best part is that if we were to stretch this clip out to let's say eight seconds, uh, the timer as well as the red band animation are going to adjust accordingly. So yeah, this is a dynamic, a custom timer that you can create today in DaVinci Resolve. How cool is that, right? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, I will see you next time.